All right, so I'm going to be talking about the uh, NVIDIA Shield uh, controller for the NVIDIA Shield tablet and portable. Uh, I've just turned it on. Uh, so I just got this today. I'll tell you what I think about it so far. Um, so, yeah, so I'm using, I've only used it with the tablet. I do have the portable, um, but I'm using it with the tablet. So, so far... We'll just show you some of the features here or whatever. We got uh, two analog sticks, uh, floating D-pad. Got uh, some touch-sensitive buttons here. The touch-sensitive home button, back, home, and or that's that's the Tegra, whatever the the button for the uh, what is that uh, the store thing. And then we have the home button, media button, which normally acts as a start button, back button. Uh, I have a touchpad down here, so this area is a touchpad. You press it, and that acts as a as a, actually as a touch, unless you deselect uh, the option to for a mouse to act as a touch. Uh, mouse click to act as a touch. You need to shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> um, so then we have back here the triggers. And bumpers, these are kind of mushy and very, way too easy to press. They don't give enough resistance. So it's a little, I don't know. Um, have the buttons, A, B, X, Y. Um, over here, they're average buttons. Uh, they have the, down here we have the volume rocker. So there's that. So. Uh, a lot of people have had problems with this uh, where they easily press it. At first I was like, what, what do they mean? It's like all the way down there. How are you going to press that while you're doing this? I realized, it, I guess if you're fat like me, <laughs> or at least looking like you're having a baby, and you, if you, like I rest my, I, you know, my stomach is good for resting my hands on it. And when I do that, I bump my stomach into the, <laughs> the, the, volume up and down and it causes it, the volume to go down or up so I think that's where it uh, becomes a problem um, on here you have your charging it has an internal battery so you can charge it and it has a head headphone jack where you can put like a headset in uh, I guess that works with streaming uh, as well as you know just getting the audio and any game that that uh, allows you to chat online uh, it should work with like you know like online games for streaming with uh, the PC I think I've not tried that I don't normally talk online um, yeah so and if you ever hear that person going fuck you eat shit or whatever online it's not me because I don't talk online you know because if I did I'd be saying that stuff no, uh, but yeah, and then they have the ridge on the back that I love this thing. It's a very comfortable controller to hold. It's really the most comfortable controller that I've ever held. Um, definitely better than the original Shield, which was really nice. The original Shield controller, the portable that was attached to the device, because well, first of all, it doesn't have that ridge on here where the screen had to go, so it's a lot smoother and it doesn't kind of dig into your palm here. Um, D-pad, see people saying that D-pad is better. I don't know. I don't know that it's any better. I don't really like floating D-pads. I prefer something like what Sony has or even Nintendo. Um, floating D-pads normally give me inaccuracies when pressing them. And I'm going to sneeze soon, so... Excuse me one second. <sighs> Yeah. yeah, excuse, uh, bless me, yeah, that's it, I guess. Um, so yeah, and then it has the clickable analog sticks, which are clickable analog sticks. Alright. Um, so that's really all, the, the whole controller. As a whole, I really like the controller, I definitely, uh, would recommend this, uh, that you don't use, like, say, I was using the MOGA Power, uh, Pro, whatever it is, and that thing sucked. It's always sucked. No matter what I use it with, it's always useless. Um, unless I use root access to make it, to fake it as an NVIDIA Shield controller. Um, 
really the 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 uh, Moga sucks um, for that. I mean, it works with some applications. It's it's just support more that is the problem. There's not a lot of like emulators and things that support it. Um, I have problems with the back triggers not being detected. This doesn't have that issue. I get. I was playing Real Racing. Real Racing got uh, recently got some controller support. It needs to be better, but it's a very jerky uh, steering with that. But it didn't detect the back triggers on um, the Moga, but with the Shield controller, it did. Um, so, like emulators, uh, this works with RetroArch. I had no problem with that, but with the Moga, no. It doesn't detect the MOGA. Um, and, and, you know, I know that, like, oh, well, you, you know, the developers can update it, but they're not. They're not updating these apps. These apps are kind of, ha have been the same for months, if not years. Um, like, Moopin64 did not properly detect the right analog on the MOGA. It detected the, this as one button. Like, the whole entire uh, motion here was detected as one button. And, uh... You know, it had a lot of issues detecting buttons, but not with this. This it detects every button, and you can play N64 games fine with this. Um, let's see, it was detected fine by Dreamcast, the Dreamcast and Milriacast, um, except for the build I'm using has trouble with buttons in general being detected. It's a little bit of a bug. I'm trying to find a build that actually detects. Um, detects uh, all the buttons and actually works in widescreen properly uh, true widescreen uh, I've used FPSC and I didn't know they actually added a widescreen option to FPSC like a true widescreen option I was very ecstatic with that I was playing Ridge Racer in true widescreen that was awesome um, it works with any most games that have like cameras that you know pan around and stuff so it just changes the camera like 16 by 9 aspect ratio and you can basically play your games in widescreen which I think is really fucking cool um, but yeah I was doing that I played uh, FPSC um, it's about everything I use with this works with the Nvidia Shield controller so they did a great job getting uh, compatibility uh, you know so everything really seems compatible with this controller I played Modern Combat 5, uh, all that stuff, so the compatibility is really good. The only thing I had a major issue I had, well, one thing I, I wish this did have physically <laughs> is the, there's no rumble. So I really wish they would have added a rumble feature. Um, new, the newer rumble features they have on newer consoles are really good. You know, it's like, you know, like older consoles, when they, when they rumbled, it just felt like, you know, you just want to go get your girlfriend and tell her, hey, uh, put this, you know, or you can put this. I think it wants you to do so. Yeah. It just felt like it was trying to please you instead of actually emulate what was going on in the game. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> well, that analogy and um, whatever. So, yeah. So, it doesn't have rumble. So, yeah. And... Um, Oh, I was getting at the, the experience with the tablet. Okay, so if you're like me, at least, unless, you know, this doesn't apply to anyone who just flat out will not use any touch controls, but if you will, just for convenience sake, even though controllers, physical controls are better, if for convenience sake you're out and you have a tablet and you don't want to, you're not going to be dragging this with you in your pocket or something, you're going to probably, if you have the tablet you're going to want to, and you want to play a game, you're going to want to use the touch controls just for convenience. Um, so, what happened was when playing emulators, this was a specific to emulators, um, I would have to remove the touch controls from the screen when I wanted to use a controller, because why would I want to sit there and look at touch controls when I didn't have to use them? So I removed the touch controls but then if I want to use them again I have to put them back so you know depending on how it, it's done in the emulator some are more complicated than others it may be a big pain in the ass so it, it, you know you keep having to enable them, disable them, whatever then um, another thing with RetroArch 
changing the size of the screen. Okay, so the tablet is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, and every time I plug in console mode, my TV is 16 by 9, so I keep having to change the size of the screen and take off the touch controls and put them back on, so it's a little frustrating. When you have something like the NVIDIA Shield Portable, you don't really have to do that. You have a 16 by 9 on, on the device, and you have a 16 by 9 on the TV, and you have a controller built into the device, so when you're playing, you always have a controller, so you don't have to worry about enabling touch controls and disabling them. So the convenience of having the controller attached to the screen is a kind of a big one. However, the um, tablet does run emulators a lot better uh, as far as the more um, demanding ones. It even can kind of run GameCube emulation for some parts of some games, like, uh, um, what am I getting at, uh, Mario Kart, uh, Double Dash, you can run time trial mode. It gets the scratch. The audio gets scratchy, but it's 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 fast, and it can be played. It's just the audio is not the best, but quite impressive that you can play it at all on a tablet. Um, but you know it can be played. I would if you can stream it. I would actually definitely recommend saying, don't bother with trying to play it natively. It's a little rough, but it's better than I've used on any device, although you shouldn't use the one in the Play Store. you got to use a beta build. Uh, so back to the controller, because that's what this video is about. Um, have I gotten to everything? <laughs> um, I think I've about gotten to everything. I mean, you press this. Oh, pairing is really fucking easy. Pairing is like, you turn it on, it finds a controller, boom, and then when your tablet is on, you just touch the button, it turns on, it automatically connects, like, you know, you don't have to sit there and wait for, like, a Bluetooth controller, you'll have to sit there and be like, okay, did it find it, did it find it? It just automatically connects, like, as soon as you turn it on, it's connected. So that's a really cool thing. Uh, as far as latency goes, I don't really notice latency that much uh, with anything, so I can't tell the difference between any latency with this and a Bluetooth controller. But I'm sure that I know there are people that that uh, notice it more than I do, and they may be able to tell. Uh, but whatever. Um, let's see, what was I getting at now? Uh, so you know, like what another thing was when I was using the Moga controller, you'd pair it with the device, and you'd be sitting there like waiting for it to find it finally. Sometimes it would fail to find the fucking controller. And I'd have to restart the controller, <laughs> and it would look again, and depending, it may find it. Then I'd have to do all this, like, stuff to accept it, you know, like, do you want a pair? Yes. Do you want to, you know. And then, like, the next time I booted up my tablet, this is the, the actual part, this, I boot up my tablet and find out that it forgot, I guess, the controller. It no longer was, I had to go back into the settings and sync it up again. And it was a pain in the ass. It didn't always sync. Ugh. It could be a pain in the ass, but this is just turn it on, it syncs. That's been my biggest problem with Bluetooth controllers and Android, at least. And I don't know. These Bluetooth controllers with my. Uh, yeah, basically Bluetooth in general. Um, I really. Unless it's like on PS1, or, uh, PS, PS1, PS3, or PS4, it seems to be fine, but. When I use this, or not that, when I use another controller, a Bluetooth controller, it was always a pain in the ass to get the shit to sync. This isn't like that. This just right away syncs. As soon as you turn it on, you can press the buttons and, and, and you're navigating everything. So that's that's a good thing. It's a lot more convenient that way. Not more convenient than having a controller with the device attached to it, but yeah. So... The only other gripe I have with this is that it's ugly as fuck, and that's really not, you know, going to do anything. You know, like, what am I going to say about that? It's ugly, so what? Um, and, oh, included in the box, there's no fucking uh, power brick. Like, why, why wouldn't they include a power brick? They just have the USB cable. And, like, I, why do I need, if I have the power, I don't know. Because there's not enough power, it's not like there's enough power in my uh, PC to actually charge this thing. If I plug this into my PC, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> um, so you'd think they would include a power brick. 
They're like, if they think, oh, well, you know, the, the tablet came with a power brick and everything, so you don't need one. Well, then what would be the point in giving me the USB cable? Because I already have that, too. I can just grab the same USB cable and plug it in, so don't bother giving me any of that. But I guess I have an extra USB cable. I mean, I just wish they would have actually included a power brick, and they didn't. Um, I also wish that this at least had a bundle. I don't wish... I don't think they should include this in all the NVIDIA Shield tablets, because I know some people would like to have a tablet... Um, just a tablet, you know, they may want just a tablet, and for this, um, you know, they should have a console bundle, and maybe the tablet, so you can have it all, and that's the end of this video, because I'm running out of time, well, thank you for watching.